Hi everyone, in this video we will be showing um, some Ethernet testing using VX testers on the 100G. So um, we've got a couple of models from VX for the 100G, the TX340 and the RST6200. Um, the steps and the procedure to do 100G testing on Ethernet uh, or the other technologies is pretty much the same because the GUI is the same between the different uh, units. So we will be using today the TX340 for on 100G and it's the same procedures if you want to test 10G or 25G or any other Ethernet uh, traffic rate. So uh, yeah, as soon as you start the TX340 with the 100G module, uh, this is the initial screen you'll get. You start by configuring port 1, group 1, and you go to your QSFP or the SFP28 or whatever the transceiver you will be playing with. So start with the 100G testing and you click on OK to initialize the application for 100G. So my setup looks like a loop back on the other side. So I've got the transmission analyzer TX340 sending out 100G and there's a loop back on the other side and sending back the 100G back to the TX340 100G tester. So you can control your unit either using a web browser and logging into the IP of the unit or start a VNC application or you can just play on the display uh, of the unit itself. So we've got the application initialized now on the 100G. So I've got 100G uh, on port 1 and the laser is turned off. You can turn it on from the right tab here. Laser on. And then you start configuring the test you want to run. So let's have a look on the throughput test. You can select each, uh, either layer 2 or layer 3, so I'll stay with layer 3. You can set a VTAG, um, VLAN tags, one or two or three tags. And yeah, you can start cascading the VLAN and the tags here. If you click any of these uh, sections on the uh, traffic structure, you go directly to the tabs of these um, different sections. So if you go to VLAN you can configure the priority and the ID of the different LANs, VLANs you have there. If you want to go back and move out of this screen just uh, press on the red cross up there. You go back to the main header setup. Um, you can, after, after finishing the configuration and the whole setup, you can just press on profile, last configuration and do a save as an save as a profile that you can use later on instead of reconfiguring every time. So that's um, the main structure. You can still configure the traffic. Go to general if you have want to have more than one stream. You can do up to eight streams. So stream one has got 25% of the bandwidth, or you can just click on eight streams apply. and you've got eight streams each has got 12 and a half percent of the traffic go to page two you can browse between page one and page two on the configuration from the buttons down there if you go to page two you can enable service disruption uh, service disruption time measurements and you can also see histograms for the round trip delay now looking at the traffic what kind of traffic you want to put on each stream you can make it like a constant traffic and set the frame size to be fixed and then you select which frame size you want to put there and you can also choose different frame size for the other streams or you can just apply to all if you change something on one of the streams so we are pretty much ready to start our test then so click on the um, start button the green one and you can see that we're transmitting at 100 gig and because of the loopback we're getting 100 gig back so no bad frames or poor frames uh, post frames so looks pretty clean if you click on alarm or error you'll start injecting these so give it a click and then you got one alarm if you click on error you'll get one error and you see bad frames one the counter started there if you go to the errors and alarms tabs so you've got already some disruption 
happen because of the injection we've made. If you go to events, you can see there is a service disruption time violation happening and uh, yeah, you'll see a log of the events happening there. So the stream summary, you can see a summary of the stream here, you can see histogram and that's the global view for the whole traffic. If you want to look at the signal, um, the level and the frequency, so this is the level of the receiver on the four different wavelengths and this is the transmitter level and the frequency and some information about your transceiver, the manufacturer, the serial number and the wavelength. You can also get some information about the temperature and voltage. Uh, traffic, this is the structure of the traffic we played with. Delay, you can see the delay happening here. And then you can start looking at per stream information. So this is stream 2 of 8. Click on previous to see the previous one. So we had one bad frame on first stream and it's clean on the second stream. Going back to stream number one, if you look at the errors, you've got some frame loss happening because of the errors we injected. Service disruption time, you can reset it as well. Delay, you can look at frame delay variation and frame arrival times. Rates is just a, a gauge view and the physical control sublayer information about the PCS you can set up the injection from the bottom right there so you can configure what kind of injection you want to make so is it a CRC so you can't configure it while the test is running so press stop and you can configure the type of injection. Is it a checksum, a pose, or a out of service, or a sequence error? You can make it a single injection, or a burst, or a rate. Almost the same thing for the alarm. So what kind of alarm you want to generate? And the behavior, is it a single burst, or a continuous, and the duration of that alarm? At any point you need to go back and exit that screen just press the red cross at the top and we're back at the results screen. Now if you want to save this measurement just press on the save button you will see on your browser or on your main screen of the display of the unit so I'll call this one throughput 100 gig and apply and it will be saved. Later on we will see uh, the list of results and the files we got. So that's for the throughput. We'll go now to the RFC. Now press the red cross to exit the throughput test. Back to the main test menu. Go to RFC 2544 tab. Uh, it will look pretty much the same actually like the throughput except that you will have more tabs to configure your throughput, latency, frame loss and burst. So the RFC consists of four things. The throughput, latency, frame loss and burst. We've seen already the throughput so you can set it to a maximum rate of 100% and a resolution of 1% and a duration of 5 seconds. You can just choose the duration to be whatever you want. <coughs> latency Alright, you put the duration and the repetition for the latency test or you can choose to skip the latency so the RFC report will not include latency. Frame loss, you put the desired rate and the step size and the duration for that test. Burst stability, minimum and maximum durations, repetitions and the rate. Also you can enable and disable like the others. Frames, so what kind of frames you want to put on the RFC? Uh, you can select these standard frames or you can just add yours, let's say 2000. So I've got 2000 here as well.
thresholds. So what is pass and fail? You put in the thresholds for the throughput and latency for each frame size. Or you maybe you, you just want to disable the thresholds. So yeah, we're pretty much ready. Click start and you start the RFC testing. It will go one by one, throughput, latency, frame and burstability. Remember that we just set it to five seconds just for the sake of the demo. So it will go pretty much quickly. So if you look at throughput, yeah, it's done. Let's look at the results throughput while the other tests are running. So this is a graphical representation of the throughput, 100%. You can see it as a summary. Pass, 100%. You can see it as a log. Yeah, almost the same. Latency results. So if you want latency or jitter, depends what you want to see. The latency or the jitter, it will be there. Frame loss. Test has already finished because you can see that the start button, the green button, is now back to green. So the test has already finished. So that's for the frame loss. We don't have any losses. So at 90% and 100% for the 1518 frame size. Burstability, pass, and physical control sequence, the information about it. And that was the signal level for the transmit and receive. And the frequency events, if any, it will be logged here. So that's the throughput, latency, and frame loss. So it's done, done, done. You can then click on save and do the same for the saving RFC 2544 on 100 gig. Just give it a name. And let's move finally to Y1564. Press on the red cross back to the main test menu. Go to VSAM. VSAM is the actually the 1564 implementation by VX. So we've got eight services and we're going to do configuration test and service performance test. So the Y1564 has got two parts, the service configuration and the service performance test. Uh, you can choose the duration of your CIR. You can make it a user defined and make it maybe just a short one for one minute and apply just for the sake of the demo. So you've uh, enable, enabled already the eight services. And if you want to configure each of these services, go to the services tab there. Again, it's the same uh, interface we played with before on the RFC and the throughput. So you configure what kind of traffic you want to put for that service. One of eight, is it layer three or layer two? What kind of frame size will be there? Service attributes, if you want to enable or disable traffic policing, it will be here. So, and you set the policing rate. And how much of the traffic will be there for that service. And you click on next to configure each of these services. If you decided to, let's say, um, change any parameter and apply it to all, just press on copy. So you will copy the configuration of service 2 to all other services you will have. And a summary there for the MAC addresses, the IPs for each of the service, VLANs, and that was the header. So we are pretty much ready to start this one. Press on start button. And it should start with the configuration performance uh, performance configuration test first on each of the services. So it will go one by one. So I'll pause the video here and just show you the results after um, like 20 seconds. So we, we have resumed the video and it's the last service being tested for the configuration. And then it will move to the performance test of each of these services. Now all of the services have passed. That's the summary for each of the services. Now it's running the performance test in the background. 
we have already set the test for one minute you can see per service running information and the results for service number two and you can just browse while the service is running you can see as well the signal level just like we did before in the RFC and the event log what's happening All right, the performance test still running looks good so all services have passed for the configuration and the performance test now you can click save give it a name so I'll just call it Y1564 100 gig and apply so now you can exit the Y1564 and this is pretty much the RFC throughput and Y1564 if you want to configure the unit as a loopback so you set it as a loopback device and use maybe another tester on the other end this is how you do it here on layer 2 or layer 3 if you want to capture some packets go to advanced and packet capture so if you've got a license for that it will, it will be enabled auto scripting you can run profiles sequentially from profile 1, 2, 3, the ones that you have configured previously so you can run them sequentially on the BERT and the throughput tests now that we have saved the results go to this toolbox icon at the top left to have a look on the results go to files saved and you see a list of saved results there so we've got Y1564 and another one that we just saved if you click on the Y1564 there click on view and you can see a sample of the report that will be generated so this is just a preview there for the test and you can download or export this test result into a PDF or an HTML or even an XML file that you can integrate with our other systems go to files you can see also the rest of the results you can push the you can download them or you can push them on a USB stick so to USB means that you can push it to USB thanks for watching and have a look on the other videos about VX testers uh, we've got also other videos how to establish easy remote Wi-Fi connections uh, layer 4 testing and some other videos that we keep updating as well. Thanks for watching.